So aside from the normal tag at, uh, class and ID selectors in CSS, there's also attribute selectors. Attribute selectors allow you to target elements within your page to style them based on attributes that you add. So I've created uh, an attribute in four paragraphs here, uh, data hyphen beetle, just a custom attribute. But what I'm going to do works for every and any attribute href, source, title, id, anything that you want, any attribute that exists you can use as part of this. So in the CSS, if you put in a set of square brackets, this means it's an attribute selector. And we can say the name of the attribute. And let's put in uh, Rebecca Purple. There we go. So all the text is changed to purple for all these paragraphs because they all have this one specific attribute. If you want, you can add the tag name in front. That's going to work as well. So if I were to change this to a different one, say div, this goes back to black. Here, let's make something a little bit more noticeable. So div with this attribute doesn't exist. Change it to a paragraph. There we are. This changed. So we can do with or without the attribute or without the tags. You can be more specific. You can say anything inside of main that has this attribute that's going to work as well. Now there's a few other variants of this. If you want to have an attribute that has a specific value, say for example, Paul. If I come in here and I add that, now I'm targeting only the element with this attribute that has this exact value. We could, um, let's change this up. Let's just put the letter O inside of here. I want to find all of the data beetle attributes that have the letter O somewhere inside them. To do that, we just add an asterisk in front of the equal sign. Now the first, third, and fourth ones, because there's an O here, an O here, and an O over here, those three get targeted. And that's what this means. So asterisk equal sign means find it anywhere inside there if it contains it at all. Okay, now I'm going to go back to removing that. Here, I'll actually, I'll put a little list of the ones as we're doing. So here is the attribute by itself. Here is an exact match. And then we wanted to find anywhere inside. So contains this one exact match. This one is has the attribute. So our next one, we're going to use the tilde character instead of this. Now with the tilde character, what we're doing is we're looking for something. I'm going to put the full name in here. Got to spell it correctly though. So um, there we are, the tilde character. Now this one means that it contains it as part of a space separated list. So I could put John and Paul inside here. It still works. I could put Ringo in front of this. But as long as this is one of the values and there's spaces on either side of it, or at least on one side of it. So here and here there's spaces this matches. It's one of the multiple values that are space separated. So let's put that one in there. Okay, we've got that. Uh, space separated. There we are. Next one is the uh, the caret, the caret character. The um, this one is starting with. So starts with John. So let's remove Ringo. There we are. This matches. Now there is a space here. There's two words, but that's okay. Even if I get rid of the space. Oh, sorry, I still had that one. There we are. So it starts with this string, like that. That's what this matches. Doesn't matter what else I put inside of here, if it has this at the beginning, it means that this is the first part of the value. Doesn't matter what comes after it. Um, the opposite of that is with the dollar sign. This is ends with. 
so we're failing here. Remove that value. And we go back to putting stuff in front of it. And it still works. So there's no problem here. So dollar sign is ends with. The caret character is starts with. Star anywhere inside. And we'll space this out, make it a little bit easier to read. You don't need the spaces. I'm just doing this for legibility's sake. Okay, and then the pipe character. This is the hyphen. So it's just a dash in the opposite direction. So if we're looking for something like this, Ringo dash John. Sorry, it's also the uh, the first character in there. There we are. So any sort of hyphenated value that you're putting inside of here, if this is the first thing, so it's the first value in that list. And there we are. These are all the variants that we have for attribute selectors. So the attribute itself, the attribute with an exact match of a value, the contains anywhere inside of it, space separated, one of the space separated values, one of the hyphen separated values, but it's the first one in the list of hyphen separated values, ends with or starts with, with the uh, caret or the dollar sign. Now, um, this has just been targeting things within here. There are some other um, common things that people would want to do. So if you're looking for something like uh, find all the images that have a certain um, href value or all the anchors that have a certain href value. So let's do that. href and I want to know if it starts with HTTPS. Like that. So this would be all anchors with href that begins with HTTPS. You want to find um, anchor tags that point to, say, PDFs on the page. So href uh, that ends with .pdf. So we can get some pretty useful things inside of here. Um, using them for any attribute. I was saying before, like this is just a custom made up one, but you can use any of the built-in ones as well. So right here, let's throw an anchor tag inside of here, just as an example. Okay, so here's my href, and if it starts with HTTPS, what do we want to do? Let's say, um, adding two REM. So there we are, two REM on either side of it. You could put a background image inside of here. You could have like a little um, icon that shows it's an external link. For the PDF, you want to put an anchor inside there. So uh, www.example.com slash document.pdf. There we are. So it's showing up red because it ended with .pdf. So very useful things, these attribute selectors. And in your JavaScript, remember that you can also use these inside of document query selector or document query selector all to use JavaScript to target different things on the page. And that's where some of the real power starts to come from. All right, so I hope that helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.